What's up everyone, this is MindBlank, welcome back to my channel and I know most of you have been waiting for this video probably ever since the new Ryzen 2nd gen CPUs launched. So today I'm happy to present to you the official Ryzen 2 and low latency RAM testing analysis. For those who don't know I've done this previously with the first gen and in that video talked about the stealth Ryzen timings, the Ryzen DRAM calculator and the performance uplift brought by tightening primary and secondary timings on any Ryzen platform. Anyway, the DRAM calculator I mentioned earlier by Usmus I think it's pronounced has been greatly improved and is no longer an Excel format but a standalone application. It still works and requires RAM latencies converted to nanoseconds not clock cycles but you can easily do that by finding your memory's base latency in nanoseconds like in this example and then calculate your timings in nanoseconds for the DRAM calculator to work. It really isn't hard to calculate all this stuff and doing it will maybe offer some insight on how things actually compare between different types of RAM out there. Of course, alternatively you can use the same program I mentioned in the initial low latency video, Typhoon Burner, it will read and automatically convert them for you. For this test I'm using the same 16GB kit of DDR4 from G-Scale, Trident Z3600 CL1616 1636-1T. This kit is actually using quality Samsung BDI memory and like with first gen Ryzen you will see the best results from BDI RAM. Unfortunately I am a little disappointed in this 2700X since I'd say the IMC is a bit worse than my 1700X. Granted I was really lucky on that chip, able to work with 3600 RAM even, something this 2700X is not capable of. For example, even using the below optimized primary and secondary timings for 3466MHz RAM speed required a little more fiddling than my 1700X ever did. And if you're wondering about these timings, they're almost the same as the ones I previously used and I could not stably go beyond 3466 on the 2700X. Right now I think a little more is possible but I need time to stabilize stuff and maybe even a higher quality RAM kit. Like with the 2600X review, this table should answer most of your important questions regarding testing methodology. I have marked in different colors the 3466 tune timing testing, which I've called VLL, very low latency. I know some people wanted to see an 8700K here, but I simply don't own one or a Z370 platform. However, as you'll see later in the video, I'm willing to put this 5GHz 7700K with tuned 3466 timings against any 5GHz 8700K running plain old autoed 3200 RAM, plain old with air quotes of course, and bet the results will be on par with a few exceptions where the extra threads on the coffee lake will actually make a difference. And gaming I mean, cause in productivity tasks I'd rather leave the 5GHz 7700K quietly loose to even a stock 8700K. Speaking of productivity, let's look at some Cinebench R15 testing. And I think Cinebench is a great tool and I personally use Cinema 4D from time to time. It is a very reliable way of measuring single and multi-threaded CPU performance. You can already see the impact of optimized timings on performance for all CPUs. For the 1700X at least, we've got a 3 point boost in single threaded performance just by optimizing the timings. 177CB single threaded for the 2700X is quite a big jump from 161, that's a 10% increase owing to higher frequencies and higher IPC. Handbrake, while giving a rather unimpressive boost to the 7700K with 3466 VLL, does show a 5 seconds reduction in rendering time on the 2700X with VLL RAM as compared to the 3200CL16, and almost 3 FPS higher. Actually Ryzen is the only platform where I think I've ever seen such impactful changes when running very high speed RAM, even in productivity tasks like this one, not to mention gaming. And lastly I've got Blender here which is actually really not impressed by the VLL RAM. There are very slight improvements in the 1 second maximum delta area. These types of very heavy workloads are kinda the only cases where you'll actually see a little difference between a properly cooled stock 2700X and manually overclocking to 4.2GHz. Ok so probably the moment you've been waiting for, game benchmarking and I'm starting with Battlefield 1. And there's a couple things to talk about here so I'll linger for a bit. First is that the first gen Ryzen's will tremendously benefit from VLL RAM. 
Second gen has baked in reduced latencies and higher clocks so the effects, while still impressive, are sometimes proportionally lower. In this game there are very few areas where GPU usage drops below 90% with VLL on both the 2700X and 7700K so we're getting close to tapping out a highly overclocked GTX 1080 at 1080p which is a very good thing. Third thing is that usually 1% and 0.1% lows will greatly jump on all CPUs when paired with VLL RAM. Next up on the list is Ashes of the Singularity and on both the 1700X and 2700X I saw a massive jump in averages. We are talking about 16-17% to extra performance from VLL RAM which is simply huge and much more than the typical generational leap in performance. Even the 7700K starts acting more like an 8700K here seeing around 6-7% to more performance. Frame time variance is a bit better on the 2700X and some areas but all in all they are very comparable now. It's actually impressive that the 4 core 8 thread 7700K does so well in this highly threaded game with VLL memory. Now looking at the stack here in Crisis 3 it's really apparent to me how evenly matched these processors are in this game. This is not a GPU bottleneck, as a matter of fact Crisis 3 is the game where the observed GPU usage is the lowest out of all these games. We are talking about sustained dips to low 80s or high 70s in the jungle area. What is more impressive is that VLL RAM for the 7700K made a world of difference in smoothness, 1% and 0.1% lows. It's much more fluid since there's a massive boost to 1% lows when using 3466 VLL. The frame time variance on the 2700X however is still clearly better, more frame rate stability. But Far Cry 5 is in my opinion the most exciting game tested here. It's a typical scenario of a game that does not efficiently utilize high thread count CPUs and relies on strong single core performance. It is here that it becomes very apparent the strives AMD made with 2nd gen but the boosts from VLL RAM are really really nice in the 8-9% plus area. The stock 2700X is already as fast as a tuned and overclocked 1700X but the VLL 2700X gets within 6% of the 5GHz 7700K. Frame times however look a lot better on the Ryzen 2700X. There are areas where I've seen the GPU usage constantly above 90% on the Ryzen machine with the 7700K dipping into low 80s. But anyway variance on the 2700X is almost non-existent in Far Cry 5. Rise of the Tomb Raider Geothermal Valley is still a CPU killer even in DX12. VLL RAM helps all CPUs averages but gives a massive boost to lows on the 7700K. The 2700X is within a few percent of the 7700K here though all CPUs still show reduced GPU utilization in the cabin areas of the village which are filled with NPCs. On the frame times analysis side the Ryzen is clearly better and more stable, less variance. It's funny how this game went from a poor performer on Ryzen to having some really good frame times and averages. And lastly I've got here The Witcher 3 which is among the games that see the largest boost in performance with VLL RAM. We are again talking around 16-17% to uplift which is mind blowingly high. I mean it takes the 2700X from a clear loser to eking out the VLL 7700K which sees a substantial boost on its own to its 1% and 0.1% lows. If we look at frame times they're not ideal on either side but it's clear to see where the Ryzen wins, the last part of the test where I'm in the highly populated and CPU demanding market area. Here indeed I saw GPU usage in the low 90s with the Ryzen and high 80s with the 7700K. It's enough to put the 2700X just a tad and tiny bit ahead. And this actually concludes this foray into VLL RAM with Ryzen 2nd gen CPUs and while performance uplift is not as high as we've seen on the 1700X, this is actually a good thing for the 99.5% or more of the people that will not or can't actually use VLL timings on their 2nd gen powered rigs, more performance out of the box. It is still really striking how much this sometimes affects performance and I still 100% recommend you run tuned timings on any Ryzen build if you have the RAM and platform for it. I'd revisit this with an 8700K and an even faster card than the overclocked 1080 but until that time comes don't forget to like this analysis and leave a comment below on your experience with VLL RAM. 
Check out my Instagram, Twitter and Patreon pages linked in the description if you want to become a Mimeline Tech backer and thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing. I'll see you next time everybody, bye bye.